In this video, I will be explaining line structures, which I sometimes refer to as organic notation. And this is because it's um, used by organic chemists. It's a much simpler way. So let's imagine, uh, what would it be, 2-methylbutane. So 2-methylbutane, simple hydrocarbon, could be written out in some sort of long, cumbersome, uh, means where every atom, every hydrogen, and every carbon is shown explicitly. And that could be useful for some purposes. It certainly might be good to use this representation where one wants to describe exact confirmation and the identity of uh, every atom for some purpose. Or we might use a more simplified notation which is not uncommon, where the individual bonds are assumed because the atom labels are next to each other. And in this case, oops, it's a CH, CH2, a methylene, and then a methyl here. In the case of line structure, this is further simplified where carbon-carbon bonds are shown as a line the angles are as much as possible given to be 120 there and hydrogens connected to carbons are implicit so this is a very nice way to show 2-methylbutane where one doesn't u want to use a lot of writing the structure is very clear uh, the confirmation may or may not be um, we can have something uh, so we can have something a little more complicated uh, let me give you an example where uh, it would be, let's see, 2,2-dimethylpentane. And in that case, this carbon this that has uh, four substituents, the angles are chosen here to remind us that it's tetrahedral. And we can decorate that further if we wanted to. Uh, we could, Or let me do it in a different one. If we wanted to distinguish between these two methyl groups, we can use a thickening wedge to indicate the methyl coming out and we can use dashed lines to show the one uh, going back. So we can show chirality here where necessary. The other essential point of this notation is that other than the hydrocarbon backbone, other than the hydrocarbon, uh, atoms are indicated specifically. So 2 mercaptoethanol which is a fairly common biochemical reagent, would be shown this way, where the alcohol portion is shown here, the thiol portion is shown here, this is a carbon here, this is a carbon here. There is one carbon-carbon bond, there is a carbon-oxygen, there's a carbon-sulfur bond. So that, in a, uh, let's say, old-fashioned, um, would be drawn this way, two methylenes, and this. So those are the same. Um, a more common biochemical, uh, more common biochemical interest may be amino acids. So if I show you alanine, I might draw it this way, where I can show you the double bonds as two lines. I can indicate charge, and in this case there's a methyl on the anomeric carbon. So charge can be shown Double bonds can be shown. Uh, that can be true of um, other just hydrocarbons. We can show them. Aromatic rings, we tend to draw as hexagons. And I didn't do a very good job here. Let me, uh, let me do a different amino acid. Let me give you uh, amino acid tyrosine so that I'm drawing it in this sphiterionic form here. We have the anomeric carbon, the carboxyl. And in this case, there's a methylene carbon. And then there is an aromatic r ring. It's much easier to draw these uh, aromatic rings, these hexagons, if one has the point going up. And the difference here, this is tyrosine. It's aromatic, so I can draw the double bonds. It's different than phenylalanine, which I will draw here uh, separately. And again, Phenylalanine doesn't have the phenolic group there. It has just a simple benzyl group. And I could draw that with the double bonds or just use a circle or aromatic. It doesn't matter. Um, 
uh, on paper, it's a little easier to be neater. So we have these kind of systems. We can draw very complex molecules relatively simply and unambiguously. The important point is unambiguously. It's important to show a geometry that is spreads a molecule out enough to be convenient. It's, it's um, good to use 120 degrees where possible. Um, some molecules are a little more complicated. We can use this notation also of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, we have a variety of projections, uh, Fisher and Haworth. They all have different purposes. Some of that purpose is recognition of the specific uh, saccharide involved or of certain aspects of it. Um, for this kind of line structure, uh, glucose would be something like, uh, oops, this. So let me do this. That's an oxygen there. Sometimes we write over the the um, angle uh, to decorate it and sometimes we leave a gap as convenient. Uh, here's glucose. Uh, glucose is interesting because all the substituents are equatorial and in this case it'll be beta glucose. So I can do something like that and that's not so clear. Let me draw at least just the uh, the cyclohexane chair shape here so you can see that. I'm having a little trouble with my pen. If I draw it larger it's a little easier. So I can draw in this case glucose again and I could show you alpha, the alpha anomer and one sees in this representation very clearly not only the identity chemical identity of the molecule, but one has a sense of, of conformation and that sometimes is important. The other sort of uh, more complex structures, though, so let's see if I have room here. Let me try ATP. So I have to draw the adenine and I'm going to do it this way. Five membered rings are a little bit more difficult. Here I'm just going to draw the uh, heterocyclic, uh, the nitrogens, the heavy atoms in the heterocycle on top of the line there. It's a little messier, but for the interests of speed and what happens practically to leave a gap and have it all neat is sometimes not possible. Uh, sometimes people put a circle here just to indicate its aromatic nature. That's not so important. So this would be adenine. I can connect that so it's uh, adenosine and I can show the ribose moiety like this. There's a variety of ways to show ribose. Uh, you'll see Haworth and Fisher, not Fisher in this point, but you'll see a Haworth-like structure typically used in the book. Here, if I stick to the organic notation, it would be something like this. And uh, this is adenosine. I could put phosphate, triphosphate on there and be ATP. There's another thing I want to uh, indicate is that structures can be mixed. It may be here we have the hydrogens attached to carbons are implicit. Hydrogens attached to other heavy atoms are explicitly represented. Charges are shown. It could be for whatever purpose we want to discuss a particular hydrogen or carbon that otherwise wouldn't be shown. We can do that. We can just add here this other hydrogen there because we want to talk about it, because it's important. Likewise, if I care about this methylene at the phi position, I, I could have drawn the carbon here like that. So sometimes it's, uh, it's a mixed structure where certain hydrogens or certain features are indicated um, in a way. And that's fine. Notation is flexible. Notation has a purpose. Notation is communicate and we use it in the way that works best. So very often we see things are not strictly along one convention but they're mixed for the purposes of communication. Okay, so the difficulty I, students, I see students have with this uh, notation, this diagramming, is sometimes not understanding the actual structure of the molecule. Uh, if there's chirality, which uh, doesn't come up so much in this course, but chirality is always, can always be confusing. And um, then in the terms of using the, uh, in working with these structures, that the angles used. So a, let's say a long chain fatty acid 
let me give you a fatty acid here, an ionized. Okay, um, so one carbon, two carbon, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, things like this. It's very convenient to have uh, a regular angle chosen there of 120 degrees. And of course, if we wanted to have some fatty acid here with a uh, unsaturation, um, we have to pay a little more attention. Naturally, they only show up in certain places. So one, two, three, let's say here we have a cis fatty acid. That would be now omega one, two, three. I have to, oops, I have to do this differently. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this would be omega one, two, three, four, five, six, omega six fatty acid of some sort. And what I've drawn may not be a very common molecule, but nonetheless, I can indicate for fatty acids, cis and trans, very clearly. And we can understand some of their properties this way just by the notation or very easily through the notation. Practice helps a lot. Some of the structures I've drawn are quite messy. Partly that's the uh, tablet I'm using. It's much easier to do this with a pencil on paper or a chalk on a chalkboard. Whiteboards are a little more difficult. This tablet I'm using is more difficult. Sometimes it takes some practice getting regular hexagons. I have not too much difficulty, if I can find a space where I can draw here, uh, not too much difficulty making regular hexagons with the point is up. I have a bit more difficulty if the point is uh, sideways. And of course, things like pentagons are uh, also a bit more challenging. Okay, good luck with that. Practice a little bit when you're doing assignment, write things out when you're taking notes, write what's on the board. This helps a lot.